Good evening. No, it was on. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Board of Education regular business meeting and public budget hearing. Would you all please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Can I have a motion, please, to move out of executive session? Michael? Second. Second by Linda. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Seeing no alterations to the agenda, um, we normally have liaison reports, so I encourage everyone to go online and look at the links of our student liaisons. They do a tremendous job talking about the events in their buildings, and they always have a lot of good news to share. We did not have any speakers requesting time to address the board in accordance with the rules of our policy, which has been in effect since July of 2016. We have had some requests to review our policy and we'll take those suggestions under advisement. It is important to remember two things. Board meetings are held in public because we conduct the business of the school district in accordance with open meeting laws. However, these are not the public's meetings. We strongly encourage people to reach out and work together with us to resolve concerns and differences. Now that our meetings will be in person, we often have students in attendance and ask everyone to be civil and courteous. Mike Alt owes residents an apology. So if we will clear the room if that's necessary. We're gonna take a brief recess. Thank you, the room will be cleared. going to the community on May 18th, we are obligated and bound by law to do that. There is a policy for speaking. You are welcome to email, to call. None of those options are ever used. And if you want to speak, we have a policy. So please do so, but we would respectfully ask that we can conduct the business of tonight. It's important for the entire district, not just this group. So if, if you'd like to do that, we'll continue. And if it can't happen, we need to clear the room. This cannot continue. This is not our process. We cannot allow this to happen. This is not a forum for speaking. If you would like, if you, excuse me, if you would like to list your name and your concern, I will, we will follow up with you personally. I promise you that. And if you don't, we will not be able to continue. It's that simple. We are not prepared for this. This is not the way it's going to go down. It can't. I honestly believe, I understand that people are angry and upset, but this is not the process. This is not going to work. So again, you have a choice. You can allow us to conduct the business of the district, which we are bound to do by state law, or we will be forced to clear the room. This is a not, this is not a safe setting, and people need to feel safe.
we can set another meeting to do that because it's not going to happen at a business meeting. We have an entirely full agenda. So those me so what happens is the school district open meeting laws require that we conduct business in public. This is not a public meeting. There is a distinction. And that's why there are our public comment policy in speaking times. If you would like to leave an email or contact information. There is a policy. I, I, I'm not sure how more to make it clear. It's been in effect since July of 2016. Okay. We will. We cannot reschedule the budget. This is required by New York State law. We can schedule a meeting that you are all welcome to speak at. I am fine doing that. No, it's not tonight. I'm sorry, it's not. I'm sorry. We're not, we're not able to do that. Sure. 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 We can do that. We can do that. So this room is set up because this meeting needs to be televised and it needs to be recorded because of the budget hearing. Is that, if, if we make an announcement tomorrow that we schedule a public meeting tonight, do you all have your calendars? Okay. I'm done. This has to happen tonight. The budget meeting has to happen I know. Tonight. No, a meeting for them. If we're all here and you want to get your budget line thing done, then just let us speak. Yeah, let's And then you can do your budget. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything. Or we would like to, we would like to find a date. We're going to talk amongst ourselves. We're going to find a date as soon as possible. It's not today. It's not today.
May 27th. We, we again will adjourn and we'll come up with a, with a mutually acceptable date and it is not tonight. Um, sorry, we're going to continue with the work that we have to do. Opening up the 15 minutes after, after sorry. Okay. If I said that so right. with that, Brian Freeman. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Motion carries. With that, thank you, Brian. Please continue for us. All right. Let's see. Uh, speed round 2021 22 budget. It's up on the big screen for everybody's viewing pleasure. So here's our agenda. There's our recap of what we did. Budget timeline really started off in November with uh, the governor's proposal in January to just a little bit about a month ago to the legislature producing a new budget. So for this budget, the four main points that have been added uh, right now is 11.0 additional staff members across K-12 for mental health support. Uh, a majority of those positions are going to the elementary to even out, no more shared staff between buildings. So every staff will be uniform as far as psychologists and social workers. Uh, technology support, just because we've had a lot of cybersecurity issues around the area, people are aware of, a couple districts, um, adding, uh, really accelerating up our uh, upgrade of servers and switches, uh, some reduction reserve usage, and increase in building budgets. So our three-part budget is the way every district in New York State has to present it. There is no other time where we do the budget like this except for on the budget hearing, which is required by law. Everything we submit to the state actually doesn't follow this format. So we have administrative program and capital. Uh, here's the breakdown, 77.5% for program, 15.2% for capital. Administrative is 7.3%. There is the detail on the administrative. There's the program, capital. Here's where we spend our money overall. Budget by state function. This is how we actually report it to the state, not by the three others. So there is what we spend it on. 92% of it is on salaries, benefits, because we do have about 1,600 employees. So that is uh, a bulk of what we spend money on. On the revenue side, we are just about a 60-30 split between property tax and state aid, which is kind of you know, typical for a suburban district. Um, the state views us as more on the wealthy side in comparison, so this is how our pie chart breaks down. Here is our revenue categories. Um, really not too many different revenue categories um, that we really have as a district besides state aid. Uh, we do get sales tax in a few other areas as well. So overall proposed budget for 21-22, a 3.02% increase over last year. Uh, one thing we do have to mention as part of this is contingent budget. What happens if voters don't approve the budget? Um, so there's really two legal recourses. Uh, I could seek another vote in early June with uh, the same spending plan or something uh, different, or you can implement a contingent budget right away. What happens there is the tax levy gets capped, so we uh, would have to remove certain items as part of the contingent budget, equipment, free use of facilities, things like that, like Boy Scouts couldn't get free use of facilities, uh, different groups like that would have to go away. Um, so we would remove that and then we'd have to come up with an extra million because really what we have to do is reduce the total tax levy um, 
by 3.5 million. Wow, that's big money, dude. That's big money. So federal stimulus, normally we don't do this, but I was going to add this in because it's something that we probably want to discuss, but I could zoom right through that to get to the other more just pressing legal stuff. Um, the propositions, first, we do these capital outlay projects every year. SED makes us call them out. We've been doing these now for uh, almost a decade. Um, we are going to do some work at Clem North. Uh, it's funded by a transfer of capital. Uh, we get uh, $75,000 in state aid back the following year. This is projects that we would normally do uh, as part of our normal buildings and grounds efforts, uh, but we could take this money and get the state aid. Next proposition is our bus purchase. Uh, same as every, every year um, that we're doing, 10 buses, four uh, minis, you know, 10 buses come in, 10 buses go out on the surplus. Um, usually our buses, around 10 years, 100,000 miles is when they reach their capacity. Vote is May 18th, 2021, Webster Schrader Gymnasium, back in person, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, board of Ed candidates will appear. We have two seats. We have seven people running. This was based on a random drawing. They will appear in this order on the ballots. Any budget information is linked there, including this presentation. There you go. All righty. Thus concludes the legal budget hearing. Thank you very much, Brian. At this point, we have 15 minutes for three minutes, um, five speakers. And our next meeting is May 27th. It's a workshop, although people are always welcome to speak. The meeting following that is June 3rd. Is there anyone that would like to address the board? Please say your name and have a seat. Thank you. I had no intention to speak tonight at all, but I want to tell you right now, I've been coming to these board meetings for three years. And all I've seen is this board sit up here and have no common courtesy at all for us people, the taxpayers here, okay? The, th there's so much history. Ultimately, when everything was all said and done, my biggest gripe is the start time. When you decided to affect the entire community, grandparents, parents, children, your the thing cost me $6,000 because I had to get a babysitter, but I got two older kids that can take care of my own kids when they get off the bus. So literally, like all we wanted to do was come and talk, but all you kept trying to do was wear us down. And I can tell you right now, if this floor would have been open back then, I would never be here. The transparency page wouldn't be on. I'm tired of trying to wear us down. Tammy, I'm talking to you. You look at me. I'm tired of you guys trying to wear us down. You, you said the last meeting you want mutual respect. It starts with all of you first. I watch you not have respect to us for three years now. Three years. This is what I'm talking about. Look at the just. So, I, like I said, I did not come here to speak, but there's plenty of people here that are upset, and we need to be able to voice our opinions, and we need to be heard, and ultimately, when everything's all said and done, we still need to be a community, and we all need to come together. So that means we need to come together with us and you. And based upon the way you guys do stuff, it's not going to happen, okay? Mr. Neenan, I've heard very good things about you. I I've, I've personally right now, I 100% respect you, okay? And you are coming into a very hard position and I would not wanna be in that seat, but you have a great opportunity to bring us all together. We are hurting parents, okay? We're hurting parents. We're hurting taxpayers. And I can tell you right now, the, the you cannot keep silencing us because this group just keeps growing and it's not going to stop. And like, again, I, I respect you. I don't respect you at all. 
Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to address the board? I have a question. I emailed this question, but I didn't get a response. Um, quietly this week, I'm Spencer. Sorry, could oh, you sorry, please Sarah introduce Delay. You? Okay. This week, uh, Spencer Port went back to school, um, seven through twelve. Churchville Chiley went back to school. Brockport went back to school. It's not on the news. It didn't make, for whatever reason, newsworthy uh, information. But with everything that's going on in this district, I don't trust that you guys are even thinking about bringing our kids back to school. At this point, it's May 6th or whatever, and it's, it's a moot point. But when other districts are being creative and they're thinking outside the box and they're working with the parents and trying to come up with ways to bring the kids in safely and doing it, what if you guys, we didn't even have a plan. Like there was no plan for Webster the minute the governor or whomever, CDC or whomever said, okay, three feet, three feet. Oh, well, we're going to wait. We don't have a plan. We need six weeks. We need seven weeks to come up with a plan. Why was there no plan? There should have been a plan on, on, on yeah, September 5th. Yeah. So, so is there a plan? Do you talk about this? Do you talk about it in private session? I'm sure you do, I would hope. Um, and do you work, reach out to other districts and ask them what they're doing that creatively to make it work? Um, do you have a plan other than jabbing our children with poison? Yes. So, I just want to make sure. I just my concern and my it's not really a question that I'm thinking you're going to answer, you know, right? You just keep turning your head and looking at him. Answer us. Answer us. If the governor said tomorrow, the three feet is gone. We're out of our red zone. That by the way, I don't even think exists. Are you going to bring the kids back on Monday? Like. Am I on? Am you're I on. on? Okay, you're I'm on. on. So first of all, typically this is a public comment, yeah. and the the way that it works is the public comment. You would comments, normally answer, I and know. I don't answer those I know. questions. I know. But with the permission of the board, I will address the the piece if, if with the permission of the board. Awesome. Okay. All right. So um, yes, we have had these. Absolutely, we've been having these these conversations. And I will tell you that all of us, that I'm looking around, I see all of our principals. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. We've got a lot of people here in support, and I really appreciate that. I've been having conversations with the board as well this week. I know it's only been this week, but to, just to let them know that there are two main things to bring in our kids back. Right. The number one thing was is the rate. We are in the red zone, and we can't do anything about it unless the numbers come down. The second thing is the cohorting. Right. So the cohorting is a situation where you're right, Churchill, Spencerport, Brockport. and Brockport yep. are coming back. I don't think all three of them are in yet, but they are planning on coming back. I think two are in now, are in now yeah. and one is supposedly coming back, I believe, on the 17th. Right. The cohorting concept, if we were in our old schedule at Willink and Spry, because remember, this is only for middle school. So this is only for sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. We have, no one has gotten the approval yet to come back for high school unless they go abide by the six foot rule. So if you're abiding by the six foot rule, you're a small district, you could potentially come back. For us, we, we, don't, we don't have that option and no one else in the area is, has that option at the high school. Going back to the cohorting, if we were teamed right now at the middle school, which we're not because we used a schedule this year that allowed us, it's the same schedule, it's an eight period schedule that allowed us to, to do the remote uh, academy that we needed to do, but it's the same for the high school, the middle school, and the remote. But because of that, we couldn't team and so because of that, we can't cohort. But how but did they do it then? Because they are teamed, and they can cohort. It's six-foot rule, hugging okay. each other with masks on, pictures uh, all over the I, I, I understand that. But again, for us to do that, we have to have... I, 
I'm, I'm just, I'm trying, okay, I'm, I'm I know, trying I to know, answer you. I'm, I'm really trying to answer you. No, I, I just want to make sure that there is a plan that if in Okay, fact, and that's where I was going yeah. next. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, to the gentleman who asked the question about next year, because when I've talked to parents, I have talked to several parents, maybe some of you this week, and thank you for the conversations. I've had some very good, respectful conversations, and I really appreciate that. In a lot of cases, it's just that you didn't know, and I totally understand that. So for next year, we are going to do everything. We're going to get creative. We're going to do the creative pieces that we need to do. We're going to go back to teaming to make sure we do everything possible for everyone in our district to be here full time next year. That's our 100% that's our desire and our hope, and we will do whatever we can to do that. Okay. So, okay, Sarah, did I answer your question? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to stop because I answered yep. your question and I'm going to turn things back over to we to need Tammy. To respect back to them right now. If we, if we want respect from them, we need to show it ourselves, everybody. Thank you, Mark. People are going to get up and speak. Thank you. Speak. Then we'll us back here we need to be quiet. doing the same thing. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. And is there anyone else who would like to address the board? Please say your name once seated. Thank you. My name is Lord Wallaby. Um, I have three kids in the district. One actually does not live here anymore. Um, over the course of the year, has went downhill. So in her best interest, uh, she moved. Um, I have a son who's a freshman at Thomas. He was a high honor roll student his whole entire career up until this year. He is now failing. Um, skipping class um, and you want to know what how I find out he's skipping class it's not from the school it's from conversation so my son hasn't attended a study hall which happens to be his last period class all year I just got a call from the principal asking where he's been um, I also want to know about masking, why my kids are masked for eight hours a day while they're sitting at a desk. The only time they can take their mask off is to eat. It's abuse. They're wearing a mask for eight hours that's dirty, bacteria ridden, and that's okay. Show me the science. Let me see it. Because I'll tell you what, I haven't worn a mask once. Not once. Me I'm healthy. I haven't changed my life. I do the same thing. Do you know what masks are a sign of? Submission. Let my kid be a kid. Yeah, yeah. But it's okay for, I think it was the teachers at Plank South on um, St. Patrick's Day. You know, they did their happy St. Patrick's Day pictures. Definitely not three or six feet apart. Shoulder to shoulder, arms around each other. But that's acceptable. But my kid cannot be in school five days a week all day because it's unsafe. It's unsafe, but kids are playing in the neighborhood unmasked. Yeah. Yeah. And when they are in school, they don't get a mask break. None. They're running the track with masks on. And that doesn't turn your stomach? You're okay with that, Tammy? Linda? Mike? I, Brian, I'm Cynthia. Janice, Mike, Maria, and Sue? You guys are okay with this? An answer. Nobody can answer me? Is a tax paying resident of Webster. And not only am I paying school taxes, but now I am paying tuition at a private school so my nine year old can be in school five days a week. If you guys don't like it, get out. Because you want to know what? There's enough people here that will take your jobs. And guess what? We'll get our kids back. Absolutely. Quit.
confusing for kids. What's your answer? Do you have an answer? Do you have an answer? Anybody? Well, they don't have an answer. Thank you. Lunch. Anybody? Can I please have an answer? Listen, if you don't have answers, then you gotta go. We'll, we'll help. We'll do it. Tammy, I will go. gladly sit right there and do your job. And I'll tell you what. With the. You're a coward, Tammy. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to address the board? If there isn't anyone else willing to address the board, we're not done. Sure, 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 sure. Hold on. You want me coming up to speak? You got, we, got a, we got another speaker. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. <sighs> Brian, what happened to the mass break? What happened to the mass break? The kids are sitting apart. I, Why, I, go I ahead. Can, Thank yep, you. I absolutely can answer. The new regs that came out, when they came out, they made masking mandatory. That Who's was they? what happened. And Who it was, was they? Who is they? The New York State Department of Health. We don't elect them. I understand, but those, I understand that. I, I'm, an, I'm just answering your question. I understand. Why can the kids not take them off for five minutes? My daughter ran a, the, the four, fourth grade mile. She said she was afraid to go to the nurse because her stomach hurt mm -hmm. and she had a headache. Okay. Children should not be running in masks. They should not be in masks during athletics. Fresh air. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that our children... Yeah, I'm, children I'm just answering your question. Okay. I'm answering your question, and that was the answer that... That, that is our answer, and I understand that it was a change when the new regulations came out. What I would suggest you do, please, please call your principal and start from that point right there and add, have a conversation with the principal and, 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 go, and go from that direction, especially specifically about your daughter. Okay. Okay? Do you understand that our children have allergies What's your name? April Schwander Bennett. We have to actually direct them to lie. We have to yeah. tell our kids yeah. to lie. Yes, we do. So if you have a headache, God forbid, do not go to the nurse's office. Yeah. Do not say a thing. You just text me, and I'll say you have an appointment. They are we on their direct own. Direct our children to lie because, because of you people. One hundred percent. I'm sorry. I agree. They don't because they, they, they don't have kids in school. No, you don't. don't care. My daughter. I had to call her in, ill with random excuses because I found out later she had, she came down with sore throat. She needs her tonsils out. I didn't know that. I was afraid to call because she would get something shoved up her nose for a COVID test because she had a sore throat. She needs her tonsils out. But I was afraid to say that because then it would be like, oh, no, we got to quarantine you because you have COVID. No, kids get sick. They have tonsils out. They have allergies. This has got to stop. I mean, we need our kids in. And another question I have, Brian, why is it that the kids need, why is it the teachers need an extra hour planning for elementary school? They, they only go, they're an hour less in school. Why is that? Because before this whole COVID, teachers did their planning on the nights, on the weekends. They're not staying to clean up the rooms. The te the, the that has to do with our special schedule. No, there's no special schedule. They're getting, that, but, but they're no, getting their I understand what you're saying, and, and I understand exactly what you're saying. It's because when we used, to, next year, when we're back to a normal schedule, oh, okay. sure. the yeah, teachers get their- Let him finish, let him finish. The teachers get their planning throughout our rotation of our specials. That couldn't happen when we came back for this one. So we had to give all of our teachers the same time to do that same time planning. We felt that that was the best option for us to get everybody back because we knew there were other obstacles. If we didn't do that, there were other obstacles that were gonna potentially keep us from being able to get back full time, which we didn't want. We wanted to do everything we can. That was a hurdle. We were like, okay, here's a solution to that hurdle. Let's go with that solution. We worked it out with our teachers and our teachers union, and, and we all supported that to get everybody back. I know it's not full. I'm not even trying to say that. What I'm saying is that we are closer to full in that. And our goal, again, like I said to the other gentleman uh, and, and, and lady, what, next year, we want it all back. We want it all back. Okay. Can you, can you speak for the fact that my son is on track and now has to wear a mask when he's running in a 100-meter race? There's nobody around him, and he's got to wear a mask. Did you not see the video of the child passing out on the finish line in track the other day in Oregon? 
Do you want that for our children? No. I, no okay, no. then we've got to stop this so we'll, in sports, okay, especially well. in gym. My daughter wanted to sign up for Clem South. She's going to be doing the after or the special yep. thing with his with her gym teacher, and they're required to wear masks over the summer. There's 30 yep. freaking There's kids in the There's going to be program. more conversations about masks, and I'm welcome to have those. I'd love to hear more from you, and I'd love to have that. I do want to respect yep. the process, and let's we'll move on to the next speaker. I think there's a one one more speaker. Thank you. Is that right? Thank you. Can somebody just answer a few of my questions, though? I mean, that was kind of rude that you went on to the next person. We have a speaker in the back. Put up. But wait, we're not even at the first question yet. Nobody's got a word. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be rude, but they don't answer in this forum. So they take what you say and then. Well, I have all night. Okay. I got the answer. If you would state your name, please, and ask Christine Shuttleworth. Address the board. No, please. So, I'm not. I'm just. I understand as a teacher myself that a lot of this stuff is out of your control. I get what's going on in the state and what the state has mandated and what the county has mandated and all those types of things. So I understand that as a teacher. I work in a district where we've had a budget go down in the past. And we've had to go to a, a contingency budget, and it was pretty awful. You did not run out of money and so, in district in New York. And so probably, probably a year ago, year and a, well, maybe a year and a half ago now, was the only time I talked to Mr. Gamina. And in that conversation, I told him that my concern for the district was that if the board and if he were not transparent with taxpayers, then I feared that what happened in my district was going to happen in our district. And so now you have combined with the fact that there's so many people who feel that the board hasn't been transparent and that Mr. Gamina was not transparent, and I get that you're stepping into a really difficult spot. Um, compile that now with what's happened with COVID, and I really fear that our budget's going to end up going down. Because people, when they're frustrated, when people don't feel that they're listened to, when they don't feel that the board's transparent, then the only place that people have a way to voice their frustrations is on the budget. And I think we all understand that that's pretty bad for our kids. It's bad for our community. But I fear that this is going to be the year that Webster may have that reckoning that our budget goes down, we go to contingency, and it hurts all of us. And so I'd really encourage you, I really appreciate that tonight you've taken the time to really respond to things and questions that were asked. And I think that moving forward, if there's an ability for people to feel that they can be heard, without you know five speakers a night and we're only because you tell us that you want to hear from us you're happy to hear from us but when you say you can have three speakers three minutes so nine minutes of your board meeting is going to go to speakers and you don't answer any i questions. think at the end of the day people feel like they're not being heard and the end result is our budget goes down so that's my two cents thank you thank you is it five hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, please come forward. Hi, my name is Margo Sass, and I have two children in the district. And I was wondering, what are the plans for the children next year to bridge the year and a half of education that they have lost? I've been quite frustrated as my middle schooler um, during her virtual days. Most of the days have been canceled by the teachers. So they would, on average virtual day, she would average about 50 to 60 minutes of education where most of her classes were canceled. So what is being done to accommodate that lapse? Nothing. Thank you. Zero. Pass Do you want to speak to that? Uh, next. Next child. Next. 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 Child left behind. Uh -huh. You're right. Next oh. child. Okay. Yeah. If you, um, Brian has a response that he'll share with you. Sure. Um, can you uh, remind me your name again? Margo. Margo. Thank you. And thank you for the question. This is something that we have been having a lot of conversations on recently. Um, one of the things that uh, Brian has been um, telling us about with our budget and whatnot 
is that we need to really look at our summer programming and what are some things that we can do with the summer and after school programming throughout next year. Those are some supplemental ideas. And then we want to take and be able to spend, spend enough money this summer in our professional development and curriculum writing so that we can allow for our teachers to plan for that and make sure that we can address those gaps and also looking, we want to do things that want to bring teachers together that are speaking about curriculum where what they were able to accomplish with the standards from one grade to the next so that they know where to pick up as a group to be able to move forward. So we have been having a lot of those conversations internally and with the federal stimulus monies coming, that's really what we want to put those federal stimulus monies towards is to be able to do right what you're talking about, which is to be able to address. We all know this has been no pandemic. This is a pandemic that we've never wanted to be a part of. None of us. And neither did our kids. Like what we want to do going forward is we want to have kid conversations. We're poised to have those. We're ready to have those. And I believe, again, I was able to get to almost every building this week and see kids in action. They're poised. They're ready and they're excited. So kudos to parents and kudos to all of our staff for the work that they're doing to help us get through this pandemic. We know this is not an easy place to be, but we have to address that. Absolutely our top, top priority going into next year besides coming back, those two. We want to come back and focus. That will address that, number one, and then we want to be able to address the gaps. So thank you. Thank you. We have one more speaker. My name is Lisa Sergey. I teach here as well in the school district. And I'm just going to say that I think everybody here, here tonight specifically. Sorry, everybody here, I think, tonight is specifically here because the transparency is not here. I specifically had an issue with my child in second grade last year. I addressed CARM directly multiple times. It wasn't until I showed up for three board meetings in a row that he actually walked out on a board meeting, which I know several people are here to witness, to confront me in the breezeway at the high school and say, do I know you? And I said, yeah, I, I work at a car dealership. I sold you your last three cars and you're ignoring all my emails. I said, don't worry, I'll be going to the press next. A violent kid in the classroom shouldn't happen. Didn't follow the handbook, doesn't follow any policies just slept it under the rug. Next thing you know, he goes to my daughter's classroom the next day. He shows up, puts his arm around her. Oh, I'm gonna make it all right, you know. No offense, it's all bull There's no transparency. There's no, there's no communication. I couldn't tell you how many times I emailed the board, I emailed CARM, I emailed the principal who did respond to me quite regularly. But unfortunately, it was out of her hands. I'm following what I'm told I have to do. Look at the handbook. What was supposed to be done wasn't being done. And then I get some excuse. Well, no offense, you have a handbook for a reason. You have policies for a reason. No offense, some of these policies, some of these policies are completely to waive transparency, to make it so that we don't know what's going on. I agree, you're in a tough spot. But I think everybody else here is also afraid that this budget is also paying off whatever you got to do to get rid of CARM. Yes. Yes. And no offense, I'm not going to sign off on that because his are not our responsibility. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not paying for whatever he did that was wrong and neither should anybody else here. And we should all know about it. If there was some agreement to make him go away, we should all know what it was. But bottom line, this isn't transparency. What happened here, I walked in a few minutes late, but what happened here was not transparent. The fact that we have a limited time, I'm glad that you finally waived the, the time limits and whatever for tonight, but I can tell you that I, those meetings that I went to before, I watched people get cut off. I watched the deck get stacked against the people that were trying to speak because you had other faculty members from the school district contradict everything that they were saying. How fair is that? 
So you got parents who have concerns, and then you stack a person who comes in with an exact opposite opinion, who doesn't have kids in the school district, but they're a teacher, and they say, oh, well, we're addressing that, we're taking care of that. You're just passing the buck, and you're just trying to pat them on the back and make them feel good. That's not transparency, that's just schlepping it under the rug and hoping everyone goes away. Address the issues. People here, obviously, I understand, it's not necessarily always the time to answer those questions, but we expect answers. We pay our tax dollars for this school district, which somebody, you know, he said it was a, we're classified as a wealthier school district. That's why we get, you know, our, our percentage. Well, guess what? My tax dollars then should go to this wealthier school district and be heard. They should be represented as such. And if they're not, I'm going to say no to the budget. Yep. Why wouldn't I? What, 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 do I, what incentive do I have that my kids are getting a fair education for what I'm paying for? That's all I have. Thank you. Um, sure, one more, sure. Thank you. Um, my name is Christina Bell. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, I think what a lot of people are wondering is, the plan for reopening uh, this coming school year, uh, what are your um, thoughts on mandating the vaccine? Um, and so that's, that's question number one. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to address too is the fact that there has been teachers who have been pushing their ideas on the students, which I think are totally, totally unacceptable. It, the teachers are not medically trained. They have no business um, putting their opinions on minors, especially when it comes to something like that, for an experimental shot um, that is not FDA approved. That is not their business to have any part of that. Um, so just those two things. So what is your plan for Reopening does it have anything to do with mandating vaccines and then also addressing the issue of teachers getting involved in uh, pushing their ideas on the vaccine when they shouldn't. Yeah, I guess I would just say like, like Tammy and I both just said the same thing. We haven't heard anything about a mandated vaccine. So we don't we don't have that in our plan for reopening at all because that's not something that's been shared with us and we don't have that knowledge. Okay. It would come from the. That it would be coming from the New York State us. decision. So and, I, and, and as gonna, far as I, and I appreciate the con the conversation, I don't I didn't I'm not aware of mm -hmm. those conversations in the classroom, but I have our our principals in the back that are hearing you as well, and we'll mm -hmm. certainly make sure that we we speak with our staff about being Great. very sensitive. Okay. And not that. So, okay. thank you. I appreciate that. Thank, thank you so you. much. One more speaker. Just really quick. I wanted to bring up um, what I've been reading recently about bringing the critical race theory to the schools. Um, I didn't know if you could just give a brief uh, word on what that might entail and if you're bringing it in September and this is part of the curriculum or you did you not hear of it or you're saying that you heard about that from our district or is this in the media just in general you're saying it's in general, in general. right now our step right now for us is about training our teachers um, for diversity equity and inclusion and we've been doing that now for the last couple of years Okay. Okay. Yep. That's where we're at as a district. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, we will we will try to find a way to accommodate. I understand that there may have been emails. Um, previous superintendent had different ideas about communication, and we have an opportunity to do things differently, and I think that we will. Um, we met with a couple parents already, uh, Brian and myself, and um, had a conversation, and we're open to do that. We, we really want to have respectful dialogue, and we really want to include the community. Um, f if you have an email that didn't receive a response, I apologize on behalf of all of us. Um, that's not our intention. 
That is not our intention. But we do truly appreciate respectful discourse. Um, we are a school district, and we're a model for our children, and that's very, very important to consider. We would like to move on with our agenda. You're welcome to stay. You're welcome to leave. You're welcome to follow up in any way about leaving a name or a question or anything specific that, you, that you'd like an answer to. But we do have business to, that we need to attend to. Do you want me to go next? This? Can I introduce? Yeah, yeah I have I something to say. I'm not sure. I think Dan left. Is Dan, Dan, is Dan here? Okay. We had invited me? Dan White from Monroe One Boses. Um, he's the president of Monroe One Boses and has a lot of experience with superintendent transitions. Um, and we do want this evening to also be a meeting and, and a tenor that extends beyond tonight and beyond these walls to welcome Brian Neenan into this new role So I, I just have a brief statement, if you would. Um, beginning with a quote, there is no power for change greater than a community discovering what it cares about. This board believes that is a watershed moment before us. After an extraordinarily challenging year in every way imaginable, we have an opportunity before us to unite, to place our district's children in their education as our foremost responsibility, and to support our building leadership and senior leadership teams many of whom are here this evening, and we definitely appreciate your support. The power of positivity and strong working relationships will be our foundation moving forward, and we will project stability and reassurance to our community that our commitment is unwavering. We are deeply grateful that Brian Neenan agreed to step into the role of interim superintendent, and that we also have Dan White. I, I know that he had to leave. Um, Brian, I know uh, he's had a very busy week and visited all the schools, so welcome, and I know he has some comments that he wants to share with us. Thank you, Tammy. Um, and thank you. Uh, certainly not how I envisioned my, my, first, <laughs> my first meeting to ever go, but this is real, and this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna pick up, and I'm gonna, sorry. I'm going to pick up, and we are going to go, my, the word I've been using all week and I really want to use, and I definitely want to use with everybody in this room, is together. Together. This is, this is about our kids. I've got some words. I'm going to try and stick to these just for a few minutes because I want to make sure I get some points across, but that was just me starting in that regard. It's an honor to be in this district, and it certainly is an honor to be in, in this interim role, and I, first of all, want to thank the board for, for trusting me in this role, and I and I want to thank um, you know our administrators and our teachers that I know many of our that are here tonight and parents that have been here tonight to, to certainly support your kids because that's what this is about. It's about supporting your kids. Twelve years ago, I arrived here. Uh, I had interviewed for the Willink Middle School principal position, and I was the Willink Middle School principal for four years, which I absolutely loved. And I remember specifically an interview question, the last interview question that I asked, actually, to the, to the committee. And I said, you know, what is it that makes Webster great? And the first response I remember, I'll never forget, was students, our students. The second answer was family. And... It couldn't have been more perfect for what I believe it is what we all need to do is to remember this is about students and this is about us coming together as a family. So for me, that touched me so much that I still remember it till today. Uh, in the last eight years, I've been in the assistant superintendent role, and actually as the la in the last six, I've been the deputy superintendent. Again, uh, working with a phenomenal group of people and a phenomenal team uh, that everything that we try to do is about team because it's in service of the kids. Um, Webster is my heart. It is my family. I know our, our family is hurting right now. That's real. And we need, to, we need to come together. And I have talked, I have had the, a crazy week. This has been the craziest week I think I've ever had, for sure. But it's also been some of the most 
amazing moments. I've been able to get to almost all of our buildings tomorrow. I will finish off making sure I get into every building. I'm also trying to get into our transportation department, our buildings and grounds. It, no one is left out of this equation. We can't do this. We can't pick this up and we can't move on if any one of us isn't willing to say, let's put the kids first, let's have these dialogues, let's, let's open, have these conversations. I want you to know what we're doing and things that we are working towards because I know that the goal is all the same. I'm ready to do that and I'm poised and, 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 and privileged and honored and humbled, to be honest with you, to do that. So again, that's speaking from the heart. I had a chance uh, Tuesday night to speak to PTSA uh, and Brian and I, thank you, Brian, for coming and doing the budget show, uh, budget road show there with me. Um, and again, I said to them, same thing together. This is about us as a, as, a, as a community. I believe that we've had some challenges for sure, that there's nothing here that we can't pick up and move forward because we need to move forward for the kids and all of you and all of our families because family is everything to me and this is my family. So I wanted to start out with that. I think the next thing I was supposed to do, and I was supposed to turn it over to Dan White for a few comments, but I won't because he's not here. So, but I also want to say thank you for coming out and thank you to the board for, um, for listening to me and certainly listening to, to everyone. So those are my comments for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there is one if we choose one item of business that we need to conduct tonight, it is um, approving a collective bargaining agreement. And we've all seen and received this information, had a chance to review, had a chance to ask questions of Brian Freeman. Um, so can we have a motion, please, to accept the collective bargaining agreements? Sue, second by Maria, all in favor? Okay, that concludes the business. Um, the rest can carry over until the following meeting. We wish everyone well. We truly do. Please take care, enjoy the rest of your evening, and can we have a motion to adjourn, please? Linda, second by Maria. Thank you all.